welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. Now, and time is relative on YouTube, so don't think that you can't paint this any time of the year. Of course you can. So I've got my standard 15 by 12 canvas. All the colours I'm going to be using are going to be listed by there. Again, with the selection of brushes that I'm going to use. Standard brushes that I use in every single lesson. So let's just go through those very quickly. I've got a couple of short flats. I've got a couple of um, script lining brushes. I've got a detail brush, a little filbert. I have actually got one of these uh, brushes. This is a bristle brush and a one inch short flat. Now these bristle brushes are available on the website um, along with my medium mix and my liquid clear which I've got in pots there which I am going to be using. I'll talk through that as we speak. And that's available on www.clive5art.co.uk. So with that out the way, let's get some paint on the canvas. Okay, so I'm starting today with a... Um, as I said, a 15 by 12 canvas, and it's, a, it's had two coats of gesso, and it's had a yellow ground on it. I don't know if you remember the goldfish that I painted a while ago, um, and that's the koi carp. I've actually painted over that. I can't. Yes, that's, that's the lesson you want to see, if you want to know what I'm talking about. Um, the reason I paint over my, my work, very simply, is I only use these as a teaching aid. Um, I don't sell the artwork at all. I scrap this. I scrap every paint that I do, I do on YouTube, or I reuse the canvases to such a point that I've got to throw them away. So every video, um, unless I'm doing it, uh, unless I'm doing it as a personal gift, which I will say, or unless I'm doing it as a commission, when I will say, um, everything else just gets scrapped. So I just use these as teaching aids. Yes, I teach you in the same way as I teach my students, and I have got some students now, believe it or not. Yes, I'm, I'm, I've got my own little art community in my local area which I, I work with and I've got several several students in there now that follow me and come along with me every week in fact yes so I'm going to start off with um, this is a one in short flat this just happens to be a sky flow there we are um, it's more like a domestic house brush basically it is yes uh, moisten down the brush the motion down the brush motion down the palette as well and we will bo do both those things a little bit of yellow a little bit of yellow on the brush, touch of white. A little bit of yellow, touch of white. Yellow and white. I mean, let's just mix that together. And let's just get this nice glow in the sky. I want a nice warm cold painting. <laughs> can we have a warm cold painting? Yes, we can in Clay's world. Of course we can. I'm adding a bit of white into that cut top corner. And I'm just going to concentrate on this background. This is, um, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a thick paint. But it's it's quite it's 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 not neat. So I, I'm I am actually adding a little bit of moisture, a little bit of my medium mix with it. There we go. There's going to be a lot of bushes and trees and things in this area, but I, I want this nice warm, glowy sky. I think is the word. Is that a word? Nice warm glowy sky. I think it could be. Yes, it could. A little bit of yellow ochre. Let's mix a bit of yellow ochre with that yellow yes let's just warm this sky up a touch here there we are a nice warmth in that sky we're going to be putting some purple on this sky at a later point but this is just the back back this is the first layer yes it is this is the first layer from paintings develop in layers especially with acrylics it doesn't matter what we do down here because there's a lot of stuff coming down here. We're going to bring a little bit of this down like that. Let's bring a little bit of this down there because we're going to have some water down here later on. So I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow ochre down there just to bring that orangey warmthy look. Orangey warmthy look, yes. And just scagging that across and letting some of that ground show through. There we are. We've got a bit of water down there. So we're going to, we're going to go that across that way. And I'm just going to bring in a bit of white. And I'm just going to put a bit of white in as we speak there, like that now. Just to put a little bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a glow in that water. Okay, and using that brush, I'm going to go, going to go into here and I'm going to bring that white out like that, like as if there's a little bit of glow in that sky. 
practice these skies. Practice these skies. It's very important you practice these skies. Right, okay. Let's get a bit more white. A little bit more white. I'm trying to talk and paint at the same time, and it's not as easy as it sounds. It certainly isn't. And I challenge anybody to try and do that. Very, very lightly. Very, very lightly. A little bit of air between your bristles of your brush. And then just paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales, as I do. <laughs> yes. A little bit of glow in the sky. We can increase that brightness as and when we are ready to do so. I'm going to get the air dryer on and dry that up very quickly. Maybe wondering where my gloves are today. I haven't got my gloves on because I haven't got any here. <laughs> I used my last pair. So I'm going to have to hope that I can work without my gloves. I'm sure I can. I'm sure I can. Okay, so I got two different types of blue. I got an ultramarine blue and I got a, um, a cerulean blue. Um, they're going to give me some violets or purples. And um, I've got, a, I got a, a crimson red there. So adding a different blue to the crimson is going to give me a slightly different um, uh, effect. So let me put a little bit of red there. And let me have a bit of this cerulean blue. And I'll add that to that. And then just bring a little bit of white to it to show you the type of purple you're going to get from that. There we go. And then just wash my brush very quickly. Or wipe my brush out, I should say. And we're going to get a, a s bit more crimson red there. And we're going to get a little bit of this ultramarine blue. And I'll show you the different colour that you can get by using just a different blue. So you see it's got a, it's got a lot it's a lot warmer it's a lot darker in fact and uh, that's what we want it is yes okay we need to add some white to this now let's get this white mixed into there and let's just just get this there we go and add some water there we go now take a little bit of moisture off the brush very lightly we need to bleed this into the sky we want to warm this sky up Again, a little bit of yellow. Well, nice dark area there. Right, now let's get some white into that now. And let's mix all that together. I know it looks strange, but trust me, it will work. I know it looks strange, but trust me, it will work. Right up what I wanted to do now. Doesn't matter, let's go over that. Let's go over that. There we are. I can show that I'm not afraid to make mistakes neither. The reason I did that is because when I looked at it I thought no, it doesn't look a bit it looks a bit it looks a bit too too yellow. So I wanted to put a bit of warmth in that sky, so I thought let's add a bit of let's add a bit of the yellow. A bit of white again. Got a bit of warmth in that sky now. Yeah, it looked a bit too yellow for me, so I thought, yeah, let's just let's just change that up a touch. Let's just change that up a touch. And you can do that. You can do whatever you want. Nobody can say that you can't do whatever you want. And if you think you made a mistake, just go over it like I do. <laughs> There's no mistakes in painting. There aren't any mistakes in painting. It's just different ways of doing things. get that glow back in that sky there we are let's get that glow back in that sky let's bring this down a bit of yellow ochre though that's what we wanted wasn't it let's get that orangey look to this sky now that's a better sky i think that's a better sky don't don't be afraid to change things 
all this is going to be obscured shortly anyway so don't be afraid to play with your paints because that's important because you don't know what you're going to accomplish if you don't and don't be afraid to make mistakes this is what I'm trying to show you as well don't be afraid to make mistakes because only you know when the painting is finished only you know what mistakes are in that painting oh we'll bring a bit of purple let's bring a bit of purple down here like that We mix it up, so let's use it. There we are, nice and dry. How's that look? That looks pretty good, I think. Let's get this brush. Dry, dry brush. There's no paint on this brush. I'm just pulling out that white area. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white. Just add a little bit of white. Develop the shape. As if it's a little bit of a easy old sun there. There we go. What a lovely looking sky that is. What a lovely looking sky. I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to get a script liner brush now, and I'm going to go back into some of this purple. It's like the purple, I think. Let's put a little bit of let's put a little bit of red to it. Let's make it a bit more. Let's have a look what that looks like. Nice purple. Does that look alright? I wonder. Let's have a look. Let's just put maybe a bit too up dark. We need to lighten that up a lot, I think. We don't want it we don't want it too bright. We want it um or too dark, I mean we want it a bit brighter. Let's just put that's better. Some tree trunks and things and can I make them noises enough I'll just put some tree shapes and Any old way, Molly's barking again today. Just put those shapes in. Just make it look as if there's some distant trees in there. We can darken that up a bit and bring some in front of that as well. And just basically put all these different types of. Or well, you can work for hours on these things. You can, and I haven't got hours, otherwise I would. We right, we'll just do a quick representation of some branches and some twigs and things going on in the distance there. And we can obscure a lot of those anyway. There we go. Oh, Molly, so she loves barking at my other dogs, and um, she does. She does love barking, I think. She's just really annoying sometimes. I do love her. And there's other dogs in the garden just behind me, and um, they like barking as well. And it'd be it'd be quite annoying. <laughs> but as long as you love dogs, like I do, then it's not too bad. I'm gonna just continue to do all these different wonderful wonderful things like that. I don't know if, how good you can see that. Let me just zoom this one camera in and show you. There we go. Let's pretend this is just a forest of things. There's a forest. There's a lot of forest. There is a lot of forest. Let's mix a bit of blue now. 
a bit of red together. Bring a bit of burnt umber to that just to darken it off to make it look more like a, a branch colour. Doesn't have to be accurate. This is your world. This is your world. Let's just bring some branches in off another tree that just happens to be just to the side here but it's, it's just it's coming across into our painting you can't see it but it is there you can just about see the twigs sneaking in onto our painting I'm going to have to go and answer my phone now. I'll put a few more there. Later on, I think. Okay, so I'm just going to go and answer my phone and see what that was. <laughs> okay. It's always something to do in the old soul of Clive. It certainly is. Yes, I took my hand off because it's a bit warm in here today. Um, I'm going to go back. Uh, there's some of that light purple there. Um, I want to go. I want to go and back into a bit of that. And I'm just going to mix these two colours together. And I'm using that little stippling brush. It's not a stippling brush. It's a, it's a bristle brush that's available on my website. And um, I find these wonderful things for this type of foliage work. Um, it's very similar to the old Bob Ross techniques. Um, and there's a lot of people say, oh, you can't use bristle brushes in acrylics. Of course you can, as long as you look after them. As long as you know how to maintain these things, it's great. So let's just put some, let's just put, let's put a little bit more white to that. Let's just get out of a little bit whiter. And let's just put a, a couple of bushes and things and all this wonderful stuff that could be there hiding in the background. It's all foliage and all this wonderful colour. That's going to come in here. We'll just put some in the background like that. And then we can bring some around there like that. Show, show some of them trees off. Put a bit more down there like that. Bring all this around in the front. There we go. Put some more in there. A little bit here, a little bit there. Just look, look as if it's bits on the trees and things. A couple of bits of trees showing the, in, the, in the distance. Who knows? Not all trees have got foliage, but it doesn't matter in your world, does it? Let's put a little bit of light and dark together now. So mix in a bit of dark in on top of that light, and you're going to see that we're going to start creating some shadows by just doing that simple little process. There you go. Simple as that. And the, the closer we come to ourselves, uh, the more the darker these things have got to become and we can start putting highlights on instead of putting things so yeah how was that looking that's looking a bit more distancey isn't it yes it is so what we can do now let's just put that brush one side a minute um let's go back into my script lining brush i'm going to get a little bit of burnt umber now i'm going to be a little bit of burnt umber in that so we still got that bit of purpley color in there but that burnt umber is a nice color and now i'm going to pull in a stronger shape like this which is going to represent a big trunk and that's going to come across and if you've got a wiggly wiggly hand this is the time that it comes and pays you dividends and you put all these little trees in and if you want to paint this realistically then paint it realistically if you want to but for the purpose of this demonstration all I'm doing is just putting some very quick little wiggly lines in like that some broken lines as well you don't have to show every single branch if you don't want to and then get that up let's put a nice tree in there and just bring that up across and there like that bring that up and put a few wiggly wiggly wigglies like that there you go that'll do wiggly wigglies and bring that branch that trunk down and make that in one there that's going to hide in a minute. We can hide him in a minute. We are. Let's just put some lines in the background now. A little bit darker 
the lines in the background like that. There you go. Just a few lines here and there like that, just to you can see it's something in the background. You can put a few little twigs there, here and there. Or you can put a few twigs in here like that. Just anywhere like that. Just to make it look like as if there's a little bit of distance. So when it's a little bit darker here, it's going to bring it automatically bring it forward. So let's put a little noble on that branch now. <laughs> and let's bring that down. There. I'm sitting away from the camera. I'm sitting on an angle. I'm like, I should be sitting right in front of it like that. But if I do that, I obscure the camera and I don't want to do that. So it's quite difficult for me sometimes to paint on an angle. And I've been painting on an angle for so many years now, I don't know what it's like to paint in front of it. <laughs> so, anyway, you get the idea. And all I'm doing today is just showing you a way of, of, of painting something. And it's just an idea. That's all I try to show in my paintings, is these are lessons of how to paint, rather than showing you what to paint. You paint whatever you want to paint. But try and use these ideas and techniques along the way. And just by doing this, and you can follow me along if you wanted to. That's fine also. Okay. So we're going back into this this colour now, and I'm going to add a little bit more uh, red, a little bit more blue into this colour. Let's make it a little bit more purpley. There we go. A bit more purpley. And add a little bit of burnt umber to it. There we go. It's just going to create a, like a dull purple. Then. Like a dull purple. And let's just think about shape and form as well. Think about shape and form. Where these things are going to be actually. In my world, I got leaves on my trees. Because that's the world I live in. So let's darken that up a bit more. Let's get a little bit more burnt umber in there. I'm going to use some cerulean blue. I'm going to use a little bit of crimson. I want to make a nice, warm, dark colour. A bit more burnt umber. And I'm going to bring some bushes in, in front now. Take some paint off your brush if it's not making the patterns you want. There we are. Okay, so let's add a little bit of white to that now. So we're going to lighten that colour. And we're using the same tone of colour, but we just lightened it a bit. Just to give the highlights on these bushes. And let's sparkle them up now with a bit of pure white. Because we're going to start putting some snow in here now. do this. It's a frosty morning. It's a cold and frosty morning today. <laughs> there we go. How does that look? Does that look nice? It looks nice. It looks cold and warm at the same time. It certainly does. So let's just put a little bit of, let's put some of this white. Just, it's been a frosty morning. This is just little pockets of old snow that may have rested in there. Let's just put some patterns and don't know what shapes and things are in there. Yeah, we've got a bit of snow going up a tree now. There we are. A bit of snow is blown on that tree. There we go. Um, let's get some ultramarine blue and some crimson. Let's make a nice dark colour. 
Again, bit of burnt umber. I'm not using black, I'm just using burnt umber to darken down my colour. And I'm going to put in a nice big foreground tree now. Then some of that yellow comes through. Gonna be dark in there as well. There we go. More brown now. I'll add a little bit of black. I'm just gonna add a little bit of black to my burnt ember. It's going to make it like a, a Van Dyke brown colour, but I still got brush. See how, how nice and dark that becomes then. And we're not going to do no, no much, not much more to that at the moment. I don't want to do too much more to this at the moment. But we're going to get. Let's just add a little bit of black. Let's get this dark in there. Let's get some shadows in there. Okay, now I'm going to get myself a little short flat, I'm going to change my brush and I get some white paint over there. I'm going to just go through that purple just to darken it off. You know, I've got a bit of a tinge to it. I want to put up some snow in here now. Let's get a bit more purple on my brush. Think of this. Just draw that on there like that. Let's get a bit more purple in. A bit more of a shadow colour. Try and find some shapes. Maybe that's a bank. Oh yeah, we'll, make, we'll turn that into a bank now and put some bushes and stuff in there now. fun doing it like this I think. Let's stop with that for the moment and um, let's just wipe my little brush out. Let me just give my brush a quick clean. effects in this water. Want to make it look as if it's maybe a little bit frozen. I don't know. Should we? I think so. Let's just put some 
reflections in. Maybe some trees or whatnot. Get a little bit of pink on my brush and just let's drag it down and just lightly across like that. Just give that essence of reflection on that water. Very, very lightly though, not a lot. That's looking pretty good. What do you think? What we need to do now is get a script liner and a bit of black. Let's mix that with a bit of that purple colour. Now I want to put a thin little water line or shadow line underneath banking like that. Take your time with this. I want to try and show snow coming through. Looks like the ice is just forming on there then. A bit of that's why you wear gloves. <laughs> okay. Let's get a bit of light. on the brush and just put a little bit of light just underneath that line you've just done looks as if there's a bit of frozen snow Just on that bank and then like that. And just about see the ground underneath that then. Looks pretty good to me. Okay. Back into a short flat. In fact, I think I'm, I'm picking up my um, little filbert brush actually. I'm going to build in some snow now.
A nice warmth. There. How does that look? It looks pretty good, doesn't it? I think so. Let's just take the edge off that black line because it's just a little bit too strong for my liking. And there. And um, let's get our script line and brush again. I'm just going to put a few lines across just to. to do you know, something like that. That's looking pretty good, I think. What we need to do now is get our our brush once more, our, our little um, stippling brush. And I'm going to just go into some pure titanium white now. Tapping down, splaying that brush out. I want to put some snow on here. As if it's been snowing. It's got a feel. I'm just going to break that up a touch. In fact, let's get. Let's get some ultramarine blue, some crimson, burnt umber, a bit of black, make a nice dark colour. Let's put another, let's put another bush here. And everybody you got to have a friend, as Bob Rock used to say. So we just put a little clump of grass in. Some clumps of grass here and there like that. Picking up our pure white. I'm going to clean my brush. Just picking up some pure white. All I'm going to do is sparkle a little bit of that. On you as well. So it's going to be really cold there. Eh, so. Just bed that down with a bit of foots. There we are. How's that? That's looking really nice, I think. What we could do then, we got a number four detail brush. Um, I said no was a number one. <laughs> I'm going to get some black. And now I'm just going to see if I can do this. Let's see if I can. Not, might, might not be too accurate, so let's have a look. When Clive concentrates, he tends to not say nothing much. But this might not be our correct, but it doesn't matter. You can see what it is in a second. You should be able to anyway.
Oh nein, war ich höher. Oh Gott. Stark. Protecting his. Got googly eyes now. A stag egg. Protecting his dough. A deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun. There we go. And then all we need to do is. A little bit of a shadow in. Maybe she's having a drink. I want to get a bit of white paint down across. There you go. How's that look? It looks pretty good, doesn't it? We can't have a little scene like this really without putting a, a couple of birds in. There you go. Because I like putting little birdies in. Right. That was a very quick, easy painting for you today. Um, have a go. Please like, comment, share and subscribe to all your... Um, social media pages and you forgot what i was going to say then and um please have a try yes it's a bit of fun you can put a little bit of, if you wanted to carry this on a little bit more then you could you could be quite easily just get a little bit of shadow like this and you're good oops just put a little bit of shadow marks under your water like that if you wanted to but for the sake of this lesson today i'm going to call it quits so please like comment share and subscribe to all your local uh, your local and your international <laughs> social media pages and um, please check the icards out there there's a little me down there with my thumb up and uh, if you want to click on that subscribe thank you very much for joining myself put a little bit of christmas music in there but if you don't want to listen to that just turn the volume down <laughs> <laughs> I will see you on the next collaboration. So um, have a good day, good week, a good month, a good year. As I don't know when exactly to see this, but um, anyway, have a bit of fun. Nice. Oh, I was tongue-tied then. Nice.